decks like my scrappy dicks. Hello everyone and welcome to my favorite time of the week. It is the third round, well the third, fourth round of the Little Cup Tournament. Now, the reason I say it is the third, fourth round is because in the third round we are supposed to be facing Kay. Now, Kay had accidentally uh, based her team around uh, a Sneasel, which is banned in Little Cup. Now, with that being said, as hard as it is to prepare yourselves on the 3DS and uh, Wi-Fi vows for Little Cups, you did not have time to create another team. So uh, the whole like purpose of her team was kind of in a jam, and she really didn't have time to create something else. And by the time the tournament got started, it just uh, it wasn't worth it. So she ended up forfeiting from the the matchup, and now forfeits do count as wins. So at this moment. We are now at 3-0. Our Little Cup Pups are undefeated with two wins and one forfeit. Now, going into week four is which this would be, but I'm just going to count it as week three. We're up against Jaquin, also known as Joe. Now, Joe has a good team. Joe is a very good battler. <clears throat> Excuse me. Now, if you did watch the Mono Tournament, Jaquin was the first kid that I battled who had the flying team, which the, the whole fiasco of the Witch Charizard is who... Happen. So if you are familiar with that, if not, I suggest you go check it out. It's a very fun tournament. Now, looking at his team, this man has threats on threats on threats on threats. We have a Ghastly. Now, Ghastly is normally Scarfed. I run Scarf Ghastly myself. Definitely some kind of threat to my team. My counter to that is going to be uh, my Scrafty, as long as he's not carrying the, double, the Dazzling Glinks. We are four times a week to that. And our other counters are going to be Shrew, because I have Knockoff that will be able to Oko it. And also, I have my Chinchow, my little Beamer, who can also T-Wave it, so that I don't have to worry about him being Focus Sash and outspeeding my Sash. Second, there's Aron. Aron is an attacking... <coughs> Excuse me. There's a force to be reckoned with. That man is an attacking machine. There's a Houndor. So, Dark Pulse is there, Flamethrower is there. If he's running mixed, it could be Sucker Punch. I need to watch out for that kind of priority. Uh, Abra, one of the greatest Focus Sash users in the game. Especially for Little Cup. Corefish is a humongous threat. Dragon Dance, adaptability, or priority. That is something I really, really need to be careful about. Because if he gets up enough Dragon Dances, and, you know, if he's able to be strong enough to take out my Chin Chow, then I am, I'm really in trouble. So that's one thing I really need to tiptoe around. And finally, there is going to be a Leap. The Leap is bulky as hell. I don't know if he has a Violet. He could be running Leftovers, you know. This thing could be doing lots of things. He could have Ingrain. Stealth Rocks are most likely going to be there. Which my team isn't too worried about Stealth Rocks. Just, uh, just my Growlithe, really. But I have Morning Sun to help get that damage off. But this is going to be best 2 out of 3. So I want to get right into it. Now, looking at his team for the first time... I felt like he was going to leave with the Leap, you know, get his Stealth Rocks up as fast as he can, you know, do little Toxic shenanigans, you know, all that stuff. Be bulky, recover, synthesis, all that. So I'm just going to lead off with Jinkies as I normally do with the Scarf lead, the Intimidate, the Volt Switch. So, <laughs> it turns out that he does lead off the Leap. So I am going to Volt Switch into the appropriate Pokemon. Now, my Volt Switch does absolutely nothing to that little Leap. But I want to go into John Blaze because my shit's done more John Blaze than that. Now, I'm going to get the double intimidate off, which means absolutely nothing. Because he's not going to attack me on the physical side. And I wanted to get in before Stealth Proc, so I'm not going to be taking 25% of damage. Now, I have an option here. I can either go for Flare Blitz, and I can take a lot of recoil and then get uh, Revenge Kill with the next Pokemon. Or I can go for Close Combat, which is still going to be super effective. And I still have a possibility to take it out. Now, I end up going with Close Combat because I didn't want to take any kind of recoil. He's going to end up going for a Toxic. I'm okay with being Toxic, you know. It's better than him going for, like, Ancient Power or something like that and getting some boost. So, now I also have another option. I do realize that he does have Ghastly on his team. Ghastly is a to fighting types. I'm in a position where I can go for the Flare Blitz because, A, Flare Blitz will kill Elite. And if he does decide to withdraw to the Ghastly, as we see right here, it's going to do huge damage, if not a kill. So, now I'm going to go for the Flare Blitz. Ghastly is coming in predicting my close combat. And I'm going to end up taking out the Ghastly. So now that's a huge threat. With a crit, I don't even know if that matters. But that's huge because now I just got rid of his Pokemon. The bad news is I don't know what kind of set he's running. So in the second game, that may come into play. Because I don't know if he's running Focus Ash, Life Orb, Scarf, Specs. Could be whatever. Now he's going to end up switching into his Abra here. He's going to go for a Psychic. Abra is such a monster, it's going to end up taking me out. We, 
So I I'm alright with that. I'm okay. So I'm going to end up going into Beamer. Now, I want to go for a T-Wave because I want to get this thing slower. So I can work around it with my other Pokemon. Now, him, A, not wanting to get, you know, on the chance of paralysis or, uh, you know, Scald or breaking the Sash. He's going to switch out. I'm going to go for the T-Wave just to make the safe play. He's going to end up going into a Leap here. Predicting me to go for a Skull so he'll get the, strain, the Storm Drain boost and be immune to the attack as well. So, I'm okay with that, and he knows he can pretty much wall me, but I do carry Ice Beam just for the fact that Grass types are going to be around. If I could catch them on a T Wave, outspeed, and hit him with an Ice Beam to take them out in the first place. Now, he's going to end up going into Aaron here. And now, I don't want to stay in because I thought, you know, these guys usually carry, you know, Head Smash, Earthquake, Iron Head, things like that. I wasn't really trying to take an Earthquake. So it turns out he's going to end up going for Head Smash as I switch into Shrew. Now I know I can take at least one hit, and I also have my Berry Juice that's going to replenish my health. So I'm really not too worried about switching in and taking a hit. Now, he's going to make a really good play here. He's going to withdraw because he knows I'm going for Earthquake. Of course I'm going to go for Earthquake. It's my, you know, nothing on the team wants to take an Earthquake, except for Houndor. Now I was like, why would he switch into Houndor unless he has an Air Balloon? Would you look at that? <laughs> he has an Air Balloon. <laughs> so, uh, on this set, I only have Stealth Rock, Rabbit Spin, Knock Off, and Earthquake. I have to go for Knock Off because I can't touch him otherwise. Now, he's going to make a play here. Go for Pursuit, predicting me to switch out. I'm going to live on 1 HP, and I figured I'm just going to stay in because I'm expendable at this point. Go for an Earthquake because I didn't want anything else to switch in and take a Flamethrower or anything. So, the Pursuit backfires on him. I live on 1 HP, take him out. Now, he's in a position where he can go into his core fish. Knows that he can eat up uh, any one hit, and he's going to be able to go for a Dragon Dance in my face. So he's using up me as setup fodder right now, which I'm not too, too worried because my Chin Chow is still at full health, and I still have my Scarf Jinx, or Jinkies, my, my Scarf Shinx, if you would. So he's in a crunch. He doesn't carry Knockoff. Now, this is where the breeding really comes in, because I'm I'm positive that Knockoff is an egg move for Corsfish. So if he had Knockoff, that, that may have changed the game a little bit. Just because you will see later on what I mean by that. But I'm going to go into my shins. I'm going to get the Intimidate to drop his attack by one. Go for the Voltage because I outspeed. And he would think, you know, he's at plus one, so he'd outspeed me. So since he's at plus one, I'm Scarf. We're now at neutral speeds. And now I'll be able to take him out and get Switch Initiative into anything that I'd like to. Now I figured my best bet is let me just go into Grimace, see what he's going to go into. Now I'm Scarfed as well. I am running dual scarfs on this team, so I'm going to go for a, a Shadow Ball on the arrow. I want to see how much this is going to do, what kind of damage it would do. It doesn't do over 50%, but I do get the special defense drop, which isn't really going to touch him. He's going to go for a Head Smash. And another thing you have to take note of is that he's not taking head uh, Recoil, so now I know he's not sturdy. I know his rock, uh, rock Head, or whatever it may be, that ability where he doesn't take Recoil. Now, I'm going to get the Intimidate off going back into my Shanks. Now, I'm going to go for the Volt Switch, hoping that this will not kill. I, I want him to stay alive because now I'm going to set him up for my own setup fodder. Because now I can switch, go right into my, my Dat John, my Scrag, and get a double Intimidate off. And now I'll be able to Dragon Dance runs, outspeed the rest of his team, and go for Drain Punches and Crunches. Now, look how much his Head Smash does. Head Smash is a, a crazy move with Stab and all that. It's not doing anything. He's going to opt to stay in. I get a free Dragon Dance up. And his damage is doing minimal to me. Absolutely minimal. He's going to go for an Iron Head now. That's not going to do, you know, any more. It's going to do about the same much. I'm just going to go for a Drain Punch. Get a little bit of health back. Uh, nothing significant. I don't even think my HP goes up by one. Or, it goes up by like two. So, I'm fine with that. And now I am at the plus one. So, I will be able to outspeed everything on his team. Now is the moment of truth because I don't know if he's focus sash or not. So I'm going to go for a crunch. I know it either A, kill, or bring him down to his sash. Turns out he's not sash, so that's really good knowledge to have for the second battle. But that is going to end up being the first battle. But I've acquired good information that I can use in the second battle against him. So this is the second battle, and we're going to get right into this one. So right now we are up 1-0 right now. So... You know, depending on this battle, we're either going to be at a 1-1 tie and we'll have to go to a tiebreaker, or I'm going to walk away with this one. So I'm going to lead off with uh, Shinx once more, like one more time, because this is pretty much my designated lead. I didn't see anything that, you know, really posed too much of a threat to it. So I'm going to lead off. He turns out he's running Scarf Gassy as well. That was the only bad thing in the first battle that I really didn't get to see, 
because we caught him on the switch. Now he's gonna take out uh, Shink's first turn. I was like, crap, I kinda needed that to set up my whole team. Now he's gonna go for Shadow Ball again. True is gonna live it because I do have, thankfully breeding wise in fifth gen, that I got the IVs that I needed. I'm able to live one Shadow Ball, get my Berry Juice back to full health, and then knock off and take him out. So that's a huge threat out of the way. Now, his only other big, big threat I really need to worry about is going to be that Corsage. Now, I know he can take one Earthquake. I have to go for it because I want to get him down to at least a little bit of health. Uh, I know he's going to Dragon Dance, but the one thing is he's setting up very early. I still have a lot of my Pokemon that can counter him, uh, which what I mean by a lot is my Chinchow. Because Chinchow is very bulky. I know I could, I know Dark Moves are only neutral. He doesn't have the knockoff that's going to be doubled in power, so it's not going to be up base 120. So I'm going to go right into Chinchow. He has it the plus one and the adaptability and attack, or the plus one in speed and attack plus the adaptability. So I, I'm actually able to eat that crunch up beautifully. It doesn't even do 50% thanks to uh, all the bulk and the Violite. So I will be able to go for a Thunderbolt and then taking down another huge threat. Now, he's going to go into Houndor. And I'm like, alright, I didn't really understand why he would go into this. I figured that, you know, he's probably max special defense and all. I mean, special attack. Figured he could take me out with a Dark Pulse. Unfortunately for him, Chin Chao has the bolt to take it. I am allowed to take it. I live on a little bit, and I can retaliate with a Skull. So now... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Most of his offensive threats are already gone. The Ghastly was gone. The Corefish is gone. The Houndor is gone. He does have his, uh his Abra left, but I do, I have ways to deal with that, I still have my Growl with me, I still have Grimace who is Scarf, which I can take this guy out in one hit, and I learned from the first match that he's not Focus Ash, so I can take him out easily, now what's going to happen here, he's going to switch into the Elite, which I'm okay with, I know I, he can eat up my hits, but uh, I have other ways to deal with this as well, and he's not going to start off with uh, the Stealth Rocks or anything like that, so I'm going to end up switching out here, because I don't want to end up you know, taking another hit. I could just keep going for Shadow Balls, but I'm going to take this opportunity to switch into that John. so now I can start setting up Dragon Dances on this guy, because there's really nothing he can do to me. He's going to end up setting up his Stealth Rocks on the Switch, which is, I don't see that being too beneficial this late after losing most of his Sweepers, but if he can keep forcing Switches, he can eventually, you know, bring me down, but I, and then attack me with the Abbey, but I still can counter him with the Scarf Gastly. Now, I'm going to Dragon Dance here, He's going to go for a Toxic, which I'm okay with, because now I have the Lumber who's going to take away the Poison, and now I'm free to go for another Dragon Dance. So I'll be two Dragon Dances deep, and he won't be able to touch me at all. And I'm still, even if he wants to Toxic me, the Drain Punches are going to keep my health up. So I'm free to go for another Dragon Dance, predicting him to go for another Toxic, because I figured, you know, he's going to try and stall me. It's He really doesn't have too much to do right now. He's kind of backed into a corner, which is what I wanted in the first place. I wanted him to be in a position where uh, he's in desperation, where I can literally set up on him and then just run through the rest of his team. So now I'm two Dragon Dances deep right now. I am toxic, but I'll be able to manage my health easily just really because I have the Drain Punch. It's going to be super effective on the Leap. It's going to be super effective on the Aron, and I'll have the Crunch to deal with the Abra, especially that we know that he's not sashed. So the Drain Punch is going to take down the Little Leap. He is going to, well, I'm going to take a little bit of toxic damage, residual damage here and there, but literally nothing too much to worry about. Aaron is going to come in. We did learn from the first game that he is a rockhead, and so he's not going to be taking recoil damage instead of sturdy. So we're going to be able to take him out, and now his final Pokemon is going to end up being the Abra, which we're going to be able to, you know, cleanly take out with a crunch. And uh, that's going to end up being uh, the game, and we're going to continue ourselves to stay on this hot streak right now uh in battles we are three and oh right now this was a very sweet victory for me because you know he did mop me up in uh the mono tournament so it was really nice for me to get this battle you know i really wanted to do well in this tournament so you know i put my head together made this team made these guys work my little cup pups are doing it they're doing it big so we are now three and oh plus the forfeit we're sitting four and oh right now so we are killing it but stay tuned for more battles. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. I sure do. I actually, I absolutely love Little Cup. So stay tuned. Next battle is coming out next Sunday. I'll catch you guys later. Bye.